This video will introduce you to clipping raster data using the raster function capabilities within ArcGIS Pro. For this example, I'm using the Vermont Hydro DEM that I downloaded from the Vermont Geodata Portal. You can see that I've gone ahead and imported into my file geodatabase. We see in the raster information that the cells are 10 by 10 and that it's a 32-bit signed integer raster, which means the integer values can be quite large and they can have negative symbols. Under the spatial reference information, we see that it's stored in the Vermont State Plane NAT83 coordinate system. The first example, we're going to zoom into an area and clip the raster data to the map extent. To access the raster functions, go to the Analysis menu and click on the Raster Functions button. This opens the Raster Functions window. I'm looking for the clip function, so I'll type that into the search window, then click on the clip function to launch it. I'm specifying the Vermont Hydro DEM in my map as the input raster. I'm leaving the clipping type set to the default of outside. Then I'm also sticking with the default clipping geometry, which is the active map view extent. This is the extent that I'm currently zoomed into. If I do any zooming or panning after I've activated the raster clip function, I'll need to go back into the function and click on the little button to reset the extent. You can see the extent coordinates change. When I click the Create New Layer button, I have a new raster layer in my map clipped down to the extent that I was zoomed into. Raster functions generate virtual rasters, and going into the properties here, we see that this isn't a standalone raster dataset, but rather a virtual clip that points back to the original Vermont Hydro DEM raster. Because it's a virtual layer, it doesn't have its own set of statistics associated with it. In order to get those, I would need to export this to a new raster dataset. Exporting the raster data allows me to preserve it for long-term use and share it with others. To do this, simply right-click on the layer and go to Data and choose Export Raster. First thing I'm going to do is select the location for where I want to store my raster. I'm putting it back inside the file geodatabase. I'm leaving the coordinate system the same, but it's very important that I pay attention to the pixel type and no data value. Recall that the Vermont Hydro DEM is a 32-bit raster, so I want to be sure to export this raster as a 32-bit. Now the original one was signed, but I know I've got no negative values within this area, so it's okay for me to choose 32-bit unsigned as a pixel type. If I had chosen another pixel type, I could have potentially lost data in the export process. Now that I've confirmed the export settings are correct, I can click on the export button and this will write this temporary virtual raster out to a brand new raster dataset in my geodatabase. Examining the properties of the exported raster, we see that it's its own raster dataset. Going into the raster information, we can confirm that it's a 32-bit unsigned raster, just as we specified in the export routine. And we'll also notice that the cell size has remained unchanged. Because it's a permanent raster dataset, it has statistics associated with it, and we can see that the spatial reference has remained unchanged. Now let's look at a situation in which we want to clip our raster down to a polygon layer. Here I have the Green Mountain National Forest Management Units. I'd like to clip my raster data down to one of these management units, so I'm going to select it, go to the Analysis pane, and then click on the Raster Function button. I'm setting the raster layer to be clipped to the Vermont Hydro DEM. I'm leaving the clipping type set to outside, but I'm going to change the clipping geometry so that it corresponds to the Green Mountain National Forest Management Units. With everything set, I'm going to click Create New Layer to create my new raster layer. As in the previous example, I've created a new virtual raster clip. However, it hasn't been clipped down to the polygon of interest, but rather it's been clipped down to the full extent of that Green Mountain National Forest Management Unit layer. The full extent or bounding box of the Green Mountain National Forest Management Unit layer is indicated by the red polygon on the screen. This issue arose because I didn't use clipping geometry. Let's remove that layer, go into the Raster Function Clip tool, and run it again. Only this time, I'm going to use the Green Mountain National Forest Management Units, not only as a clipping geometry, but I'm going to check the box to use input features for clipping geometry. Now when I click on Create New Layer, the Output DEM layer is going to represent only the boundary for that selected polygon. 
To explore this clip a little bit further, we're going to go in, display the Green Mountain National Forest Management Unit polygons, but change the symbology so that we only have outlines. When we zoom into the boundary of our polygon, it appears that the raster cells have been cut into smaller pieces. Now raster cells cannot actually be cut in twos, but because this is a virtual layer, this is a cartographic effect that's only available when you clip using a raster function. If you use the raster geoprocessing tool or export this data set, you'll see the full extent of the cells. Although it may look like you have partial cells, those cells are still there in the original data set that this layer points to. Just as we did with the extent clip, we're now going to export this to a new permanent raster data set within the Geo database. We're going to adjust our export settings so that the data are exported in the same data type, which is a 32-bit signed raster, as the original Vermont Hydro DEM. Remember, in this case, signed or unsigned would both be acceptable pixel types for this particular data set. Clicking Export writes this raster into my Geo database as its own raster data set. When we zoom into the polygon boundaries, we see that no fractions of a pixel exist. We have whole square grid cells, and this is because in a permanent raster data set, we cannot have portions of a pixel. The raster function tool can create virtual layers in which it appears that a pixel is cut in half, but when we export it, we get a full understanding of what that data set represents. Raster functions are a quick and efficient way to clip raster data, but it's important to keep in mind that these layers are temporary and that if you want to make them permanent data sets for preservation in the long term or for sharing with others, you need to first export them to a permanent raster data set.